Well, good afternoon. This is Brad Sweet. Welcome to Boxer Cable Access Studio. Uh, this afternoon, I'm here with Paul McElhaney and Greg Lavoie, co-creators and uh, producers of a web series called Super Townie. And it's about a narcissistic, self-absorbent townie who, mount, who's mount, who makes mountains out of molehills, and they always backfire on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were watching some uh, trailers out of that uh, just before we started. The camera's rolling, and it's pretty funny. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so what, uh, give us, I mean, how did you come up with this idea? Uh, part of it started uh, one day. I was actually on the train in, in Boston, and I was sitting behind a uh, guy that I would now perceive to be uh, my inspiration for Tom O'Neill. <laughs> uh, he was talking on his cell phone uh, to a friend of his and uh, he didn't seem to be paying much attention to him. He really just wanted to say what he had to say and then call the conversation quits. And it was about um, how he had seen this video on YouTube about a gentleman who had trained his hummingbird to, to count to ten. <laughs> to count to ten. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, he was on the phone, and he was like, yeah, well, yeah, okay, well, listen, I gotta show you this video. You know, this guy trained his hummingbird to count to ten. And from there, I just sort of stuck with me as I, I'd never heard anyone really you know, engage in a conversation like that, so I, I actually brought it home to Paul, mm -hmm. and Paul sort of suggested that we... Make a TV <laughs> show about it. Now, can I ask you, I mean... Did the hummingbird count vocally or flapped its wings? I have no idea. I tried, I tried to find this video on YouTube. <laughs> I did not see it. <laughs> I thought it would be everywhere, judging by the way he spoke about it. But. Yeah. Uh, and the, the cool thing about this is that um, when Greg brought this, because Greg and I lived together at the time in Somerville, and when he uh, brought it home to me, uh, this, this story, we had already been kind of... Um, had this inside joke about townies for a few months. Uh, because sometime in, in the fall of 2010 or something, yeah. uh, he, he and I and another, we, we went to high school together as well, and another childhood friend of ours was over, and uh, I, was, I had the flu, and I was like on the couch feeling like I was gonna die or something. And, uh, I know that feeling. Oh yeah, and Greg and our friend Nick were looking through an atlas of Boston, and they just found all these funny areas of Revere, one of which was Point of Pines. And we, over the next few hours, we came up with the whole demographic and culture about Point of Pines. We'd never been there before. We just started brainstorming for no reason other than to entertain ourselves. And over the next few months, we just kind of built on it and continued to elaborate on this culture that we just invented. And then Greg brought home this story, and, I, and we kind of said, let's make a TV show about this. It's, it's hilarious. Well, for, for those of you who don't know where Point of Pines is, I grew up in Marblehead, and, it, and I would wor worked in Boston in high school, and I'd drive by over the General Edwards Bridge into Revere, and you'd see this little sign that said Point of Pines, mm -hmm. and it can't be any more than uh, 50 houses on this It's tiny, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like every storm, it gets totally decimated. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is appropriate. And, yeah, uh, very appropriate. <laughs> So how many episodes have you done so far? We've, um, we started off writing, we wrote three scripts for um, like 25 minute episodes. And, um, and that's 20 episodes of five minutes each. No, yeah. these are full length. Full length, yeah, wow. 25 minute episodes. And, uh, and so we wrote the first three. Um, the first one was, is called My Lawn. And uh, we came up with the idea the same night that Greg brought that, home, that, that hummingbird story home. And uh, we were like, you know, a townie would totally look out his front window, see a bush, and assume, or come to the conclusion that it was on his property and then spend the next week trying to destroy his neighbor's life because he, he violated his property line. So we went, <laughs> yeah, we wrote the that. Mountains out of molehills. Making mountains out of molehills, exactly. And we wrote that in like two days, and then we wrote the next two, um, which are about similar, similar stories, not about lawns, but about, um, you know, just regular townie lifestyles. And while we were filming the first episode, um, at some point while we were filming at, at your house in Melrose, um, he gave me a hand mo motion like this. And he said, and it pretty much just told me to shut up. And I was like, what is that, a fish? And from there, we just started brainstorming again and making jokes, inside jokes to each other. And it eventually became episode two, uh, The Fish, which we wrote in New Hampshire uh, at my parents' summer house. We went on a retreat and went fishing. We went fishing. We caught, like, <laughs> caught like 30 fish and then went home and wrote the fish, and that's episode two. 
So and I think a, actually I think we have a, that we can show. Yeah, the trailer for that exactly. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, show that right now. Enjoy. The townie. The teacher. Hear this. No one, and I mean no one, uses the fish and gets off scot free. You want a slippery slope, my friend, and I'll bet my salty bottom you don't know what you're heading for. Outlaw hippies running wild. Tom, I'm about to pass down something to you that was passed on to me. <laughs> well, that was pretty funny. I got to admit. <laughs> Thanks. I like the uh, the motion there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, do you have some recurring characters, or is it new characters every week? Or? Greg is the star. Tom O'Neill. He's Tom O'Neill, uh, and then we have his family, which is uh, his wife Dolores, um, and Tommy, my Tommy's son. Tommy's his son. Tommy, your son. And originally, Greg was slated to play Tommy, and I was going to play his his, chi his friend Beaver, um, which is just like this dim-witted uh, high school football kicker uh, who 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 I, uh, idolizes Tom O'Neill and the other townies and wants to be one one day. And um, but after we did a run through, an audio run through of of the first episode, so we could show those interested in, in being a part of Super Townie, and Greg did the voice of Tom O'Neill for the audio run through. And uh, a good friend of ours who's now writing all the music and playing the part of Danny called me and said, I heard the audio, Greg needs to play Tom O'Neill. <laughs> he is Tom O'Neill. He, he is the super townie. And so from there, Greg became Tom O'Neill. And um, so, yeah, we have Dolores, Tommy, and then his two friends at the Union. And the, the Union is... Uh, Local 27. The Pine and Sapling Unit. The Pine and Sapling Unit. And all they do is plant trees on the sidewalk. That's, their, that's all they do. Yep. 
And so, uh, yeah, the two and only pine trees, I imagine. Only pine, pine trees, yeah, because it's point of pines. <laughs> it's the only trees they have there. Exactly. And so, um, then we have. Um, you want to describe Danny and Vinny? Um, well, well, actually, we, we, we do have a. Uh, a, uh, out, we do have an outtake of uh, Tom with his sneakers, right? Oh, yes. That's true, yep. So you want to see that? Sure. Yeah, let's yeah, do okay. it. Show, go so ahead we'll that. see. Do you want to set this up for the audience? Uh, the back story is, is that Tom has uh, a bum knee, and uh, he's, he's got a relatively expensive pair of sneakers, and um, he keeps getting scuffs on them. And so he takes a marker to actually color in the scuffs. And that's pretty much a yeah. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. This is, and this is one of our shorts. <laughs> okay, so they'll be up right right now. Enjoy. Bought these shoes, hundred twenty five dollars shoes. They like sli I got a bad knee. They like slippers. You know, they got a little white scuff. Got to color it in like that. You know, so I go home, go to work. I'm stuck in the middle. Just yap, 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 yap. Drives me crazy. You know, it's time for me to move on. I'm done. I'm done. Yap, yap. I'm done with it. It's time for me to move on. It's been good. It's time for me to move on. Sometimes I like the big dandelions, but they're no good. They're just weeds. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a. Uh... Interesting use of a good pair of sneakers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you put all this together? Because this is obviously something we do here at Box of Cable TV mm -hmm. or in the right. process of doing, but nothing to that extent. I mean, uh, we do a lot of uh, sporting events, which are one camera. You know, mm -hmm. once, you, know you, 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 you go, they show up, you show up, you're done, you go home, you put it to a DVD, you schedule it. There's obviously a lot more production involved than what you guys are doing. There is. <clears throat> and we've been blessed with um, <clears throat> a cast and crew that's very cooperative. Because, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, Greg and I have literally zero educational and academic st like background in, in filmmaking. Yeah. Just a love for comedy and film. Yeah. But a lot of our friends went to um, Emerson College and uh, the New England Institute of Art. And um, so we recruited them to help us out. And... Uh, and one of them, a good friend of ours, Nick Norman, he's, uh, he's been pretty much filling in all the blanks for the crew. Like, he, 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 he supplies us with his um, Canon 7D, and uh, <clears throat> we got an audio recorder. And then to, to get people all on the same page is just, that's by far the most stressful part because yeah. we, we're not paying anyone right now. So it's all, you know, on good faith that people are going to show up on time. Right. And, uh, you know, we try to give them food and stuff. <laughs> food. It's, it's really just um, maintaining, like, an air of confidence that, that this is going to take off and everyone involved is going to be, you know, rewarded handsomely. And it's it's, it's a, a lot, lot of fun. A lot of people that are, that are helping us out are actually having a lot of fun doing it. Well, I could see from looking at the, uh, the trailers that you brought that, they, you know, they definitely look like they're having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it takes some time to put one of these together. And as uh, so you... You trying to get this up on YouTube? Uh, how, how periodic do you get these up? We have um, we filmed I think seven or eight short films in one day. Yep. And um, wow. and that's why the audio isn't so great because yeah. we, we were jumping all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And trying to get to different locations by different times. Exactly. Um, and so we've edited five of the the seven or eight shorts. Those are all on YouTube. Uh, the trailers um, are all just cuts of all our different stuff put to music and a little bit of a you know, invented plot line. It um, took us, um, so, so to get these two episodes up, it took us about, um, I would say, a year. A year Combined, Just yeah. because of scheduling, because mm -hmm. of work, and, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes people aren't available. Um, so about a year uh, to get these two up, and we're aiming to, 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 in the future, if we can schedule, schedule it appropriately, to get more websites up regularly so that uh, we can attract more people. You know what I mean? Right, to your uh, YouTube yep. account. Exactly. So obviously you work full time to pay for your volunteering, which is one of my yes. favorite expressions. What do you guys do? I'm a systems administrator for a, uh, a software company okay. in town. I'm unemployed. You're unemployed. <laughs> ah. I was uh, I was doing landscaping for a long time, um, and that kind of helped pay for a lot of it. Yeah. And I was painting a little bit and working for my dad a little bit. Um, but I'm in the process of trying to find a real job because I, I have a college degree that I would kind of like to put into 
into effect since I paid so <laughs> much for it. They'll probably pay off some of the loans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what did you major in? Uh, sociology. Okay. At UMass Boston and UMass Amherst. Okay. So if anybody needs a good sociologist out there who can, <laughs> who can edit in Final Cut Pro yeah. and, and uh, Avid, you give us a I call. Guess I'm the <laughs> <laughs> so you have a, a, uh, an event coming up this weekend, I That's understand. Right. Yep. Saturday night, uh, March 3rd at midnight. So the night of Saturday and technically the morning of Sunday, which has actually been a really difficult procedure to schedule. To, yeah, because yeah. it's like, oh, it's at midnight. So does that mean it's on Sunday or Saturday? <laughs> so it's Saturday night um, at 11.59 uh, uh, p.m. at the Coolidge Corner Theater in Brookline on uh, 290 Harvard Street, I believe. And it's, um, you know, it's 875 yeah. a ticket, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be the first two episodes along with um, a few other... Um, the five shorts yeah, we have. Five shorts that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and... Um, so uh, long term, we'll, actually we'll get back to the uh, mm -hmm. Coolidge Corner event. So long term, I mean, you, you, I think you touched upon where you want this to go. I mean, you're looking for Hollywood or? Um, I mean, looking to see where it could take us. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously, I have a lot of confidence in our material. I think it's really funny. And I think that we can definitely bring it to another level, uh, given some time. And so I'd like to see that. Uh, I'd like to see that grow. And I'd, like to, I'd probably like to see it. Like this be a very popular and successful web series. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the baseline. That'd be that'd be incredible. Yep. I mean, uh, in the, right now we're in the process of contacting agents and producers and sending our stuff out. And um, so, if it goes to TV, if it goes to just web series, if it just gets us recognition as individuals, like whatever happens, happens. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun in the meantime. Yeah, and obviously you're a local local boxer guy. Yeah, I moved. My family moved here in uh, 2005. Um, and I've been rumor has was the day you graduated from day, high school. The, yeah, the day I graduated from high school. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, well, actually, it was my last day of high school. It was like a week before I yeah. actually graduated. But uh, yeah, it was kind of like, all right, done with school. Now I'm moving to a whole new town, and then going to UMass Amherst. So I don't really know where I live anymore. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and, and you came from Melrose, as yep. you mentioned. Uh, how much of an adjustment was it coming to the sticks up here? Uh, actually, not that much, because um, I've spent, uh, my, my family has had uh, like a summer house in New Hampshire since I was born, and um, so I spent every summer in the middle of nowhere uh, in the woods, so this is kind of like just a more long-term <laughs> thing like that. <laughs> now, if, have you ever been out and get caught up? Because, you know, 5 o'clock in Boxford, the streets roll up for the night. I mean, yeah. I've been caught up in that, is that rolling up? process. The rolling up process? Yeah, you know, you have expression that we're a sleepy little town and the streets roll up at five o'clock at night. Oh, you mean like getting used to the fact that it's empty as opposed to... No, the physical rolling up of the streets. Oh, I didn't I've given you an episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I wasn't see, aware. See, he hasn't been here long enough, yeah, folks. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <'cause, laughs> even though my parents lived here, I've, I've been bouncing all over Boston and yeah. Western Mass and so I'm still getting used to the Boxford uh, lifestyle. But it's, it's a lot calmer than, you know, the city, which is nice. Yeah. Paul tells me sometimes he's driving up here, and at night he has to dodge frogs on the Oh, yeah. The road. If it's only a frog, you're yeah. lucky. I mean, it, it, depending upon where you live, if you go up and down Ipswich Road, I've encountered her, literally herds of deer oh, I bet. right around Lowe's Pond several times. Mm -hmm. They just seem to wait for me and they kind of run out <laughs> yeah. in front of my car. Is there a car coming? Good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all staying. I'll look. <laughs> okay, getting back to the uh, Coolidge Corner event, um, we have, uh, was it fish trailer? Yes. Uh, it's Which you mentioned the fish. Yep. The f so uh, this the trailer for the fish is um, is just our our, our uh, primary way of getting people to know what this episode's about, and it's uh, it's set to um, a spaghetti western theme, um, which is pretty cool. And, and our uh, one of our cast members and crew members, uh, Chris Hurley, wrote all the music for it. And he's he's a really talented guy. Yep. I, I see all sorts of genre in there. I mean, oh, I yeah, see, yeah. I, it is. Uh, I see a little bit of Mel Brooks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see a little bit of uh, the other O'Neill there from uh, those shoe salesmen. What was that television show? Oh, Al Bundy? Know. Yeah, Al Bundy. Oh, Al Bundy. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, the, that was a big influence. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I could see uh, that. Somewhere yeah. between. Uh, oh, Ed O'Neill. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The other O'Neill. Right, right, yeah. right. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. Mel Bundy. Married yeah. with children. Married with children. Oh, yeah. A great show. Yep. One of my favorites. <laughs> um, and uh, he's actually come back on television with a, another whole new sitcom. Modern Family. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I like it a lot. Like to see, like see him coming back. Oh, so, yeah. A little bit of Al Bundy in you then, eh? I, yeah, I grew up watching that show. Yeah, yeah. it was a good show. It was a Not funny a bad show. trait to have. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are, uh, what are you planning on? Uh, what other ideas you get percolating around for episodes? Yeah, we have um, we have a we have a, gr we have a bunch. We have one about um, gastrointestinal problems. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's called uh, Red Stool. Yep. And, um, Toilet humor never dies. Yep. <laughs> we have one about uh, um, Tom. Tom. It becomes apparent that Tom used to run a pornographic website um, back in the day, and he decides to try and reboot it. Yeah. So we go to Florida. Son yeah. <laughs> this son being the web <laughs> operator, the, the web guru. Yep. Yeah. And then um, those are the, those. So those are the first three we wrote: the Mylon, Red Stool, and my and then porn. But and then uh, uh, after that, it's sort of uh, 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 there's a there's another short film that we have uh, called The Professional, um, which involves a uh, uh, a gentleman who's been working very hard, and uh, his name is Sean Schumeister, mm -hmm. and uh, Tom and him conflict. Um, you want to go? Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's on our website and on the YouTube channel, and it's it's basically just Tom and his his friend Vinny, who are two uh, a townie, and then the super townie Tom. And then um, they are just. So, so what is the difference? Is starting to interrupt. What no, is fine. the difference between a townie and a super townie? Well, a townie, um, in in Point of Pines, at least in our in, in, in our in our uh, sitcom web series, um, a townie is just someone who doesn't leave their hometown, usually doesn't go to college, uh, works at the union. Uh, every single day is exactly the same. And the big um, townie characteristic for us is they make mountains out of molehills. And I mean. You, I, every time I, I go to the train station, I run into townies, and you can just hear them t babbling on and on. The people who don't care about their social security checks, or um, or squirrel they or the, saw, or their back, or their back. Yeah, yeah. always, always joint problems. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we have a lot of respect for townies because you know in Melrose there was a ton of townies in every in every community. Every townies. town there is. So we made a super townie, and the super townie uh, is infatuated with the idea of getting to Florida to go on vacation. That is his whole life revolves around going to Florida. And I thought it was getting to Hampton Beach in the summer, no? I mean, I, I, he probably, that's probably not what he does when he can't afford to go to Florida, which is always. <laughs> um, so he spends every episode coming up with new ideas of how to turn a trivial I issue, not even an issue, just a trivial fact in his life into a problem that he can then profit from and get to Florida with his wife, who he doesn't even get along with. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So um, to go back to your question, uh, the, 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 the idea we had for another episode was um, this character, the professional, Sean Schumeister, uh, it, there's a short about him that we kind of just came up with on the spot where mm -hmm. he, he gets in a fight with uh, Tom and Tom's townie friend Vinny, basically over their difference of lifestyles where Sean Schumeister goes to night school, he's got a computer job, and then Tom and Vinny just stand on the sidewalk drinking out of their, their beer case and making fun of people that walk by. No, no, I noticed, and, and I actually saw that episode. Mm -hmm. uh, give me the uh, beer brand. Oh, it's uh, called uh, uh, Pines, Pines Porter. Porter, and the slogan is, it's all we got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've actually like, come up with a bunch of brands that come out of Point of Pines. We have Pines Puffs, other Point of Pines cigarettes. Or uh, like Puff Cereal. Yeah, P okay. Pines Puff Cereal, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we've... Uh, I think we've got time for one more clip, and this is the uh, the, the premiere trailer. The premiere yeah. trailer, yeah. correct? And again, this is basically to promote next Saturday night. Yep, exactly. Um, March third. March third at the Coolidge Corner Theater at midnight. Yep. Or yeah. one minute before midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll take a look at that, and uh, after we come back from that, we'll we'll wrap it up. Cool. Yep. Sounds good. Okay.
12 at 10.36 a.m. from phone number Duration 1 minute 25 seconds. Paul, I can't, I can't begin to describe. I found the super, super, super tally, all right? He's in He's sort of short, he wears blue jeans. He just bought a new pair of $150 Nikes, and they're black, and he, uh, he's got like some scars on his face, he's got like a big gut, and he walks with like a limp. And uh, he gave this woman a book in a group called How to Get to Heaven, and uh, he goes, yeah. the next line says, he says, he says, God is a he and she. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. And then, <laughs> and so, then after that, like a few talking, he's like, oh, they also talk about atheists. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> and um, so he's, um, he picks up in the middle of the room, he picks up this black marker, and he starts coloring his shoes. He starts coloring his shoes. And he's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they had some white scuffs on them, so I painted, I, <laughs> I painted them black. And uh, so we're outside. We're outside smoking cigarettes, and he goes, I have a hard time walking. These these springs on my neck, it feels like slips. It feels like slips. Help me so much. Just so I'll let you know. I'm gonna eat everything he says up. Alright, bye. <laughs>